Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, we are indeed live, and we are indeed back. Hello. We're we back. live. We live. <laughs> I was streaming about that with a proper horror show, actually, uh, a few days ago. Um, or was it? It was a few days ago. Yeah, it was last Wednesday. I was streaming with proper horror show about uh, they live. Yes. We, we rewatched it, didn't we? Yes, I still need to clip the old woman in the shop going, I've got one that can see! Yeah, 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 we, we do, we do need the, uh, the, uh, the whole, I've got one we can, yeah, I've got one who can see thing. It's like Photoshop Matt Goodwin on it or something. Yes, uh, we definitely should. But hello, folks, I do see returning uh, people in the chat. Hello, Years, I saw Coney Current Year in there, who I made a mod, who is one of our members. I saw Aiden Powell in there. Uh, thank you guys for coming back. And I do see many of our regulars too. So it is, hello, uh, friends. Yes, hello, friends. Someone said hello to Evelyn as well. Hello, 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 hello. What's all going on here then, eh? Um, <laughs> I've done nothing. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Nothing yet. Anyway. Uh, right. Before we get into our discussion this evening, I suppose we should do the obligatory little bit of shilling. Yes. Uh, if you want to donate directly without us getting taxed by PooTube, uh Go to the Ko-Fi link that has just been pinned in the top of the chat and is also in the description. We appreciate yes. anything that people can give through any of the sources, but you can also super chat through YouTube or become a channel member or become a subscriber on the Substack to see some extra bits over there yes. and also get these streams as a podcast without ads. I forgot to put the one up last week, so I'll be putting that up tomorrow. Uh, it'll basically be two podcasts coming up tomorrow for paying members. Because uh, I, I had an audio exporting error from YouTube a whole bunch of times and basically had to do it for workaround. But that will be on along with this one tomorrow. So there'll be two, there'll be two uh, audio version streams to listen to tomorrow. And yes, we do have uh, Ko-Fi as a way. Uh, someone did a commission through that. Uh, Sorry, that, sorry, I didn't see that. I've only really seen that pretty recently, and I responded because um, there are commissions on there, but it doesn't tell you very much. Uh, I've already told that person, but um, I'm going to give them what they want and a refund because it took me so, so took me so long to do it. So you'll be getting your five dollars back and your meme. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, on slightly different news, uh, some things are still a bit funny with us trying to do other things, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel, yes, finally. finally, yes. So for those of our friends who we see sometimes around the UK, you might actually see us again this year. Yeah, so last year was a bit of a bust because of like illness at the beginning of it and financial, st you know, basically we had a bit of an identity fraud scare that took ages to get fixed because I needed to get a new passport and, and new driving still license. Isn't, still isn't really fixed, it's but it means... it's, it's functional, at least. Yes. So we've at least kind of, it's such a, any of you who's been through that know that it takes months and months and months to fully resolve it all and it's a bit terrible but we did get there in the end it seems but yes good good evening as people are saying and hello and will uh some of you may be i guess I, we put a little bit of a description when i described kind of the stream when we were shilling it a little bit but i guess if you've come here just from the youtube kind of sub feed you might be a little bit confused about the actual subject matter of this video <laughs> uh i suppose yes but it's, it is what it says. We're going to talk about really the kind of current political landscape, um, a lot really about time horizons and planning horizons, and talk about really the only way, the only way out is to go through what we currently have. There's no yes. workarounds, there's no shortcuts, there's no kind of jumper cable into this. The election season, as um, we're going to get into a little bit, will not solve the current crises, as no. it No, I mean, I think maybe I would rather start from... Somewhere which is like our our sort of staple, our staple meal. Yes, which is the it's, weather update. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's, oh it's that's really true. It's just it's weather. actually a nice day for it's once. It's a nice day today. It's, it's spring. almost spring. It's almost a spring day. We, so we thought you we thought we weren't going to do it, but at the last second, a little bit of weather report. Yes. No, <laughs> not, anyway, not the jazz. But. One thing we have spent a lot of time talking about is essentially the large patronage patronage networks that make up the larger components of a political party. So not just the members, not just the staff, but the policy wonks, the PR people, the networkers, man talent management, TV media types. That's a larger yes. complex. And one thing we have sort of have pushed a little bit, but maybe we'll push a lot more this evening, is that during periods of elections where there is an intensification getting people just in general politically engaged yes we see a greater intensity of 
patronage and money essentially appearing in the hands of people who were otherwise not politically engaged before. No. Uh, there's a, what a lot, what's been going on really is you'll find a lot of, effectively we've talked about the Tory octopus ourselves in detail. If you look at our kind of containment series, we've kind of become the containment mapping people in certain ways. Uh, we've become the people who, who map out where the political kind of fences are or our side of the aisle, as it were. You know, we, we talked about um, on our stream to do with the, kind of the, Americanization, the Americanization of British politics, and we talked about that as well, uh, this stream here. Well, we won't be re-going over it, but we talk about the fact that really there is a bleeding over of American politics into British politics. Yes, culture war politics, I culture think, war politics. Is, is one of the best ways yes. we surmised it. Clear them out. And... Oh, but, uh, clear them out. <clears throat> Sorry, that was, that was a premature clear them out. But, but yes. Um, this sort of effect of growing patronage coupled with people who see more political energy going on become curious because they're ultimately desperate to just be engaged with literally anything Yes, creates a sort of negative feedback loop. I mean, you sort of got it written here in the intro. What's happening is that through a large wage of election spending online aimed at content creators, this creates a sort of fear of missing out and a large crowd effect and all of this together culminates and generates a, a feeling that people need to belong they, they can't miss out on this moment this might be the election that changes something it's going to be the moment everyone's going to wake up and we've even started to see this quite frankly in our own circles and we've talked about this but it doesn't end there either skeptics fear we obviously even talked years ago now at this point about uh, what Caleb Maupin had to say about BreadTube yes. and basically being funded directly by elements of the security state. We then even saw the same sort of BreadTubers become articles of, or sorry, articles, but assets of the British state as they pushed uh, COVID narratives and how to comply with lockdown and all the arguments for yes. this sort of stuff from a leftist angle. We, we, we've seen uh, through kind of, I guess, distant left outfits like the Grey Zone. We talked. We had our own stream about this back in 2021. We talked about the fact that Philosophy Tube, who may or may not have done something naughty to somebody at some point, and there's a lot of rumours about that person. But anyway, um, they were linked to money that was used for basically the astroturf and that brought forward the white helmets and a lot of the Syria propaganda stuff. And as we move forward, this will be a lot, lot, lot more common. Yes. We're starting to see money appearing in lots of different places. We're starting to see, especially kind of streamers, as it were, as well, end up as a, um, oh, excuse me, as a, as a place to dump political money. It's becoming much, much they really, more common. They really don't want to show you their website here, do they? No, 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 no. I'm, 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 trying, to, uh, I'm trying to find something here. But, but I... yes, one, one specific example that you have seen thrown around is that uh, Destiny also possibly a number of semi-interesting people that you would be thought to believe are the opposite of the bread tubes or the crumb tubers or whatever they call themselves yes are also possibly working with some of these organizations so there's some very interesting things going on and obviously as we've talked about before the the large influence of israel lobby on the right or specifically the tory octopus or the sort of even the gop octopus suppose we've not really talked about it in a while purely just because i don't think we stomach talking about american politics to any great length no it's... and that really gets us round to sort of the main matter at hand we must avoid the red meat storm as you've yes. called it well uh, the, the first thing so i was trying to finish a little bit here but um john I... help a, it's the red meat storm. Oh, no, it's the red Ooh, meat storm. We're being blown around. Oh, no. But that's what's in the corner here. We've got the uh, the red. The thing is, it's not just red meat for us. It's red meat for everybody. The story yes. here is basically a, a Democrat pack bought, has been buying and selling. We'll, we'll probably get into this in future because, oh, boy, is this a story that could have some legs on it. Mm. But it's pretty normal for a lot of these election registration, i.e. Democrat voter base uh, events, Try and bring in some of these online streamers. I know that I know we're going to mention some low hanging fruit here, but people like Hassan Piker and people like Destiny have worked to varying degrees, directly or indirectly, with tentacles of Democrat money. Mm. A lot of people get a, le a little bit upset 
with some of these alternative politics streamers when they just start taking the money. But that is what's been happening, and we'll be mapping this out as time goes on in kind of the, the radical centrist sphere, as it were, in the tattered remnants of the sceptic community, and in what is kind of known as bread tube, or some people call crumb tube, which is funny, people who want to be bread tubers. I did come up with that, by the way. That's one of mine. <laughs> but Destiny is a good example of, there's a lot of these packs that are going around. There's a pack called Progressive Victory here, which is going around effectively hiring these streamers as hired guns with the backwash of the election money. There's so much election money washing around the system that they are going out and kind of bringing it down to what is low uh, internet culture. Mm. The top flight, in quotes, I, of the internet debatosphere I do has been drafted into the election effort. I do just want to, as an aside, point out that you spent about a good minute there having to look for an article for this because every single one about it has been deleted and you had to go and archive this one from like a month before. Yeah, a bunch of stuff that I could find, I thought I could find a bit more readily has been deleted. I'll get some of the, because they've been campaigning and fundraising directly with Destiny as well, but this, you know, people are going to say it's not real. This <laughs> tells me that they maybe know something about this story developing further and not ending here, so maybe they wish to... Uh, comment on it more properly in the correct time period. Yes. Because a large part of what we also want to talk about in this sort of stream <clears throat> don't become part of the election cycle. Don't come part of do not contract election fever. It's coming, guys. We've got, it's, we've got a new thing. It's election fever. And it's a red meat storm at the same time. And the best <laughs> the best prophylactic to not getting election fever is to live in the future. Yes. I mean, it's, this is something that we have discussed a number of times now, that we look at Britain as if Keir Starmer's already in power. Yes. We look at the global sort of sphere and America as if Trump's already there, because when you have people like Larry Fink or Jamie Diamond or any other sort of mainstay elite who's over and above election cycles themselves, turn around and go, well, yeah. Trump's an inevitability... You can't really turn around and go, well, maybe he's wrong. Well, we'll, we'll shelve that for a second, because we're going to talk about that after we've talked about the content. It's a very important yes. point to keep in mind, though. So do... I, I actually got that in slightly wrong order. So thank you for bringing that up. Keep that in mind that we have to exist beyond the cycle. Because what's happening in the cycle, and this is obviously the uh, people over at Shielding, to the Witan, a uh, decent bunch of people over there, but there's something being launched here by some guy called Winston Marshall. Uh, we're not going to watch the video, don't worry. It's just him prattling on about his dissident dialogues. It's basically, it's the festival, ide festival of ideas. Should we, should we at least have a quick laugh as we look through the names? Yeah, the it's, it's well. The, well, the festival of ideas is the battle of ideas, which is the revolutionary Communist Party. Or unheard in this guy. Yes, or unheard, yes. <laughs> well, I think Mr. Winston Marshall knows some of the different people at unheard because he's part of a certain tribe. Yes, well, well, it's well. The festival ideas is the. Uh, oh yes, sorry. It's, it is the Revolutionary it, Communist Party people. Uh, we went over that. The Battle of Ideas is run by Revolutionary Communists. Go and watch our Revolutionary Communist video, uh, Revolutionary Communist Tories, if you want to see some absolute craziness that you might not be aware of. But that's who's running this. So this is being run by Unheard, which is Tory money, and Revolutionary Communists, who are well. Revolutionary communists, so lovely. But let's look at the dis let's look at these dissident thinkers before the sound comes on again. <laughs> Richard Dawkins, St Stephen Stephen fucking Penker. That's not even the worst of it. There's some of those on there. Kathleen I Stark. Even worse than that. Brianna Joy Gray, Alex O'Connor. Yep, that's the forefront of dissident thought. All right, <laughs> and and what's happening here is the increased kind of saturation of the election cycle is create a saturation in the dissident political space. Yes. What's happening is, and as we've talked about, is these dissident dialogues, people at the Festival of Ideas, exist to occupy dissident space. They exist to occupy the space and they exist with money, large amounts of money from the outside that people like us can never match. No. They sell themselves to the dissidents and it's just, it's Richard Dawkins, it's Steven Pinker, it's all of these safe regime uh, thinkers who are wearing dissidents as some kind of skin suit. They are all establishment stooges of some flavour or another. Intelleg intellectual dark web. Intelle in shut up, intellectual fucking dark web. <laughs> dark web's pretty um, good, though. But thank you for the uh, two pounds there. Does a bit of rough. Ooh-ah-ah-ah. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm starting to smell... Uh, 
That's us. Elections are close. Oh, they'll be fresh and ready da, soon. Da, 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 da. Anyway. Um, well, I, I think we must take a moment to suggest, things. of course, that never question our faith in the nation of we, Israel we, because it's undying. We, we, do in, we, do, we do indeed. Oh, boy, do I love the nation of Israel. <laughs> shall we? Shall we let, we've, not, 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 we've not let Nige do it for a while. Shall we let Nige do it for a sec? Yeah, let's go. Let's get Nige. Nige, do you want to give us a... He gives a very quick uh, appearance here. There he is. Uh, oh no, he's not appearing. Oh well. Um, I might, he, I might he have moved the where image. He he's, he's being very shy. Uh, I, I think I might have moved my folders actually. So you see, you, you people in chat, you need to tell Nigel how much you love Israel too, <laughs> and then maybe he'll show up because he's shy and he's hiding. <laughs> he can't be proud of his philo-Semitism until he sees that you do it too. <laughs> we, we, we. God damn it! He's he's completely gone missing here. I'm just not seeing the. I've, we're having some slight tech issues on there, but uh, but don't worry. We uh, we. Do. I mean, I can play I can play the audio through my phone if you want to get really desperate. <laughs> no, we do we do we do <laughs> indeed love the nation of Israel. Uh, that's, 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 he's 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 not here, but I'll uh, I'll 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 flash him up at some point if we do find him. So it's like the Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh dear. But yes, we we at this point now have become so accustomed to reading and understanding containment and how it works that we now even see the point where one Matthew Goodwin's own right response book is quoted back to him near daily on Twitter now. We we do we do see you guys like going around and bullying some of these people. Because there's also this right yes. here, which is Mr. Matthew it's Mr. Right Response. It's Mr. Chatham House writing hand in hand with the security state. It is just Mr. Matt Goodwin. Uh, running around going, I'm a dissident, I'm a dissident, after writing a document that says, I'm going to pretend to be a dissident to bring down the right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like he got caught monologuing about his evil plan at some point. But um, I, think, I think it goes to show how desperate people are, though, because there are some people out there, and I'm not going to suggest that they aren't real. Yes. When shown sections of his work, turn around and say, well, maybe he's changed his mind. It's like, no... He fully recognises that you, as someone who wants to be appeased to any populist or right-wing sense, are so desperate that you will take someone who says, yes, I'm going to help you, while they kick you in the nuts. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> it's, it's just so egregious. Again, you've got Matt Goodwin and Constant Kissin, who we've talked about before. In fact, um, I, I don't know, have we, we've kind of addressed him a little bit. But we could talk about the fact that his father is uh, some kind of Rush, former Russian official who stole a bunch of money and then ran off to the US. Oh, yes. He was a member of the tribe who profited at the fall of the USSR and then ran into the hands of the CIA with billions. <laughs> well, actually, no, he ran into the hands of MI5 oh, with billions. Sorry, the, sorry, sorry. Let's, let's make sure we get the facts right let's, here. Let's make sure we get the facts right here. So, yes. of course, it would be no, it'd be no surprise then that Constant Kissin runs around doing a duty for his father by engaging in de-radicalisation messages. Well, he's he's somebody who's very, 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 very obviously bought and paid for um, when it comes to who he is. We, in fact, this gives us a, a quick excuse to kind of go through some of this stuff here. Uh, Constance Kissin is the son of a man named... Um, ah, yes, there he is, Mr. Kissin. He's, uh, it's, it says his parents here. Uh, where where is that? Sorry, oh, okay. Vadim, sorry, Vadim it's Kissin. Marina and Vadim, and uh, it turns out in 1996 it was reported by uh, Radio Free Europe that Mr. Vadim had been accused of uh, avoiding three hundred thousand pounds worth of uh, three thousand dollars worth of uh, shall just, tax. Shall I just read this in full here? Yes. Vadim Kissin, the first senior government official to fall victim to the crackdown on tax evasion was dismissed after depositing $300,000 in a foreign bank account without paying the appropriate taxes in Russia. AFP reported on the 20th November citing Interfax, Kesson, 34, was Deputy Minister in charge of CIS affairs until his removal on 19th November. He will now be charged with large-scale tax evasion and, confiscation, oh sorry, uh, and faces up to five years in prison and the confiscation of his assets. 
According to tax officials, Kissing reportedly opened several bank accounts in Western Europe. Between 92 and 94, investigators found 10 cards in his or his parents' names issued by foreign banks. Uh, Louis Shaw Moffat, I don't know where I got that. I'll check that off air. Um, but thank you for the five uh, five dollars there. Uh, but yeah, it's just so egregious. It's so amazing. Um, and it's it's just staggering that all of this is out there. All of this exists on all of these people. You you would obviously consider this man and whatever kin he might have great great allies to the West. Well, that's why you have. Again, you have him here. Is, is immigration good for Britain? And everybody, there's Aaron Bastati here. It's what they're Sorry, doing. That's Mr. Ice Cream. Yeah. And there's, but there's, I, don't, and I know you see as Mr. Ice Cream. Yes. I'm a Leninist too. <laughs> I want to be an intolerant leftist just like you. Both sides of this conversation are people who are captured, this live debate. And they're almost, as I pointed out in this, they're almost doing like the, the, the marketplace yes. of ideas, me. I just want to briefly say, as someone has pointed out in the chat, that is the granddaughter of Ar the historian Arnold Toynbee, Polly Toynbee, that writes for The Guardian. Yep. How awful. How absolutely awful, yes. Um, and here it is. Both sides of them. Don't you love the marketplace of ideas, guys? Just wait till the bazaar of ideas rolls up. <laughs> Don't you just love... <laughs> but it's a big deal. It's again. They're, they're doing the meme. They're doing... This is your marketplace of ideas. This is what you get. This is your debatosphere. Welcome to the m -m 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 marketplace. So, <laughs> how do we avoid this? Yes. How, how, do we, how do we, as one would say, step over? I might even suggest that we, we go back to certain roots many, many years ago, such as Evola's Ride the Tiger, as it were, that things like election cycles are things that we must be personally, intellectually, and I think most importantly, spiritually above. Yes. Your life, your meaning that is derived from life can in no way relate to these events because it's not good for you. No. It might feel good in the moment, but I can assure you it's not going to do you any favours in the long run. Not if lifting yourself out of this and becoming something else that is differentiated from it is something that you want to be. Well, like you said, we must, it's almost certain at this point, I think. In fact, it, it is certain that especially Keir Starmer is going to be Prime Minister of Britain. It's very clear that there's the performative failure going on. It's very clear that all of this doesn't matter. But over and above that, yes, we must, we must really internalise the idea. We must detach ourselves completely from any and all electoral politics and pretensions of electoral politics because... Starmer will be functionally the same as Sunak, and, and it's very controversial to say this, but Trump will be functionally the same as Biden. Yep. Many of you already know this, but managerial societies are not run by the political class directly. They are run as by the departments and by the permanent bureaucracy they administer, the large managerial machine. It's yeah. the civil service and the bulk. <clears throat> it's the, the, the summation of the federal employees that do actually run America. Yes. But it is the people, it's the movers, the shakers, and the members of the elite class that run the, the permanent secretaries, that run the permanent departments, they run the Fed, they run uh, the Pentagon, they run the CIA, the FBI, not the directors, but the, lay the permanent layer underneath them that means that they have to have continuation. All of those people are the people who are in power. Like the undersecretary vanguard. They are. They, they are the, the, the officer class. Mm. A general doesn't command an army, but an, a series of officers does. Yes. They are the people who command the squadrons. They are the people who are semi on the sharp end of this. They, go, they call the shots in the heat of action. And those people largely do not change administration to administration because it would create managerial Chaos. Yes. And let's let's maybe also in a certain way go back to building blocks of where some of our stuff started. Yes. It's put forward by Hopper and Rothbard in his later years. That despite the, the the problems they had with power structures and power itself, that there will always be elites. Yes. And one of the most defining elements of whether or not someone is or isn't an elite is the effective time horizon across which they can plan. Yes. If you are in a position where, as you say, you're some aspect of the security state 
or the financial state, or you're some sort of technical specialist, other than, you know, the, the situation where there's large-scale collapse will always be required, then you don't have to plan for the next election cycle. You can plan for the next 40, 50 years. Maybe if you're someone who wants to be the, you know, the, the ground zero for a whole new political movement, and you've got the capital, people, and the connection, maybe you want to plan centuries in advance. Yes. Well, that is, it's the longer your time horizons are, and again, we're, we're not skipping ahead here, but we want you to keep this in mind as we keep talking. But the longer your time horizons are, uh, the better you will do. Living in the future is how the elites stay on top. Yes. And of course, well, as the saying goes, the best way to predict the future is to make it. But also, you don't have to predict the future, because the future is here. I, I, I hate to be like, oh, look at the polls, but... This, uh, barring like act of God, we are getting a Labour administration. Well, you know the what? UK election does not matter, and it, you, it should not be uh, entering your mental headspace. Maybe apart from the effect that the Keir Starmer regime will have in five years. Yes. Well, maybe we could look at it in this way. You looking at that polling data? Yeah. Is them demonstrating their time horizon and preference? to people who can't understand the reason for it. Yes. Because ultimately, with the way that consensus building works in politics and the way that a narrative must be created either through some force that is integrated into what the regime does or agitated against what it wants to do, it must preempt its next move. Yes. Because this makes the story stick. As, it's as it's we, like yes. foreshadowing in a film almost. It is, yes. And you... for you to look at this polling data, they're showing you, well, the next 10 years isn't Conservatives anymore, it's Labour, and we put that into the plan. Polling isn't about measuring public opinion, it is about, about creating manufacturing. It. Yes. yes, it is the manufacture of public opinion and therefore the manufacture of consent, as we've talked about many times before. It's like using a roundabout method with biscuits to teach a dog to do math. Yes. It doesn't understand <laughs> the math but it knows that 3 plus 2 equals 5 in terms of biscuits. <laughs> Whereas someone reads this and goes, Starmer's going to win. It's the same thing. The method to, by which they get to the result is completely different, but they get to the same place. In fact, we've even got people basically telling us, no, the script isn't changing. Because look at Ben Wallace warns it's too late to replace Rishi Sunak, even as MPs are unhappy. There's been a lot of chatter. I know a few bets were made in places, but Biden... And Sunak, barring actual like heart attacks, and even in Biden's case, I think they just CGI him <laughs> as they have been doing it. They'd Ruth Bader Ginsburg him, they'd Febreze him for a while. They, they, well, they've got all the clips <laughs> anyway. You just call somebody else a dog faced pony show or whatever it was. But it, it's the fact that, yes, these people are unpopular. It looks unlikely that the Conservative government would run headfirst into like a buzzsaw. <laughs> with somebody who is unelectable, but they are doing so because they are supposed to. It is the most obvious case, I think, since John Major, of somebody checking their watch and simply being cycled out. Yes, I mean, I can understand why some people get confused with what we do, because what we do to some extent is like narrative astrology. I'm out there, I'm, I'm seeing the signs <laughs> on Twitter, I'm seeing the alignments, I've spotted the, the Tory or MI5 shaped hole and some sort of I thing. I think the problem is, though, that people but... have become so stupid in many cases that the telegraphing for things that are happening quite well in advance has to become extremely simplistic. Yes. That's what we encountered with the online safety bill. When we went over the online harms framework, it was very clear that people were being prepared in quite plain terms for large scale internet censorship. Mm. And we talked about this years before it came into force. And it was unstoppable then, and it's unstoppable now, because it is part of their planning horizons. It was imagined 10 years ago. The process of making it started 10 years ago. It's been implemented in Canada with their online harms bill. It's been implemented in Europe with their equivalent of which is, the, I think, the Digital Services Act. And it's been implemented here with the online safety bill, all simultaneously because this was planned well in advance. And we need to learn not to move election cycle to election cycle. Even in the quote-unquote dissident sphere, people get very upset with us when we tell them your election doesn't matter, but your election 
doesn't matter. If you don't believe uh, democracy is genuine, then the elections do not matter. If the elections do not matter, you talking about the Trump train is completely useless because a large amount of people have shackled themselves once again to the GOP. You have a large amount of neocon money and it's going into places. In the UK as well, we see the crossover when we talked about the America's nation of British politics. We see Turning Point coming into the UK. Mm. But in the US, you have outfits as diverse as the blaze we've talked about before. Um, but it's got, and, and I know some of you have seen that clip of him, Glenn Beck, who is somebody who is an extreme philo-Semite. Yep. He is somebody who, if you've never seen the clip, go and look at our YouTube shorts. But he gushes over the fact, you know, that he regrets not being born in Israel. And you have this big tent approach that's hoovering all of these people up and getting them effectively on teat, as it were. You have that with GB News, you have that with places like Unheard, you have it with all the money coming out of places like Quilliam and the, what's the other foundation called? Um, all the Tory foundations, basically, as well. Um, and you're, is this one of your like Claremont's, or your Marshall Claremont or stuff, or yeah, oh, Claremont, Institute, Claremont Institute, yes, yes. which is a front for the Koch brothers, yes. And all of we've named, we've actually done some of this stuff to death because we've talked about the containment web, and the containment web in the UK is very similar to the containment web in the US. But the problem is, if you're once again carrying water. For the GOP, the party of Mitch McConnell, then I'm afraid I cannot help you. I don't care how think how funny you think a second Trump administration is going to be. You're still buying into election cycle by election cycle when you should be planning with far higher time horizons. Yes. Well, I, I think that's an important thing as well. It is one thing to sit there and poo democracy as weak and leftist and new world and it degrades this and it degrades that. It is another, and much in the way that one might truly deny liberalism, to actually do away with one's tendency to default to consensus on a subject. Because if you do so, you're only ever going to exist in the current flow. You've yes. got to just be brave enough to essentially swim upstream before everyone else has gone and had a look. The election fever stuff and the the, just the amount of red meat we're getting is so extreme that it it does it. You are to to, to I need to bring up the Garfield uh, image, but you are not immune to propaganda. No, you are not immune to propaganda. And even if you aren't there engaging in it as something <clears throat> that you derive meaning out of, you are still if if you're using the internet a lot, just inundated with it. Yes. You're living within it as like a sort of soup that you can't escape. And I don't think anyone that really wants a healthy social life and a healthy view of the world that gives them a reason essentially to get up every day can benefit from that. No. I mean, what reason is there to sit there and in theory craft what's going to happen when Trump gets in and what he could possibly get away with and could he do this and could he do that could he could he get rid of this part of the federal government well at the end of the day who really cares well the thing is one he couldn't he has very little leeway in what he can do when he gets in power and you know how I know that because we saw it in 2016 we saw them, again, go and watch our You Can't Take Over the Tory Party video if you want some more evidence of this. Because we go into how Trump was survived by the regime. He is just one man. Mm. And he is one man on top of an incredibly large machine. And it is an incredibly large machine because of their time horizons, which is almost impossible to steer. Yeah. Well, I was going to uh, come back round to where we were on our... Yeah, yeah, of thing. course. The current elite plan around at least 15 years in advance and they do this publicly and we can garner that they probably preempt this with their own plan secretly much prior to this yes especially in areas like defense or state large state planning pentagon papers discussing all of the arab spring in very great detail were known of by even quite low level officers yeah by the 80s in, 19 Amer or in America in the 1980s. Yes. It was just a sort of given fact that, well, we're never going to be out the Middle East ever again. No. We also saw this in 2020 with all the Agenda 2030 stuff that was getting pushed, some of which had been in the card since early as 2008. Yes. Uh, so a lot of the lockstep, the Rockefeller Foundation lockstep stuff was also 2008. And because yes. they have such a long planning horizon, 
because they have so much momentum, because they have such a big machine that they sit at the helm of, they can do incrementalism. And they can actually get away with slowly drip feeding their own policies before us. Yes. This is why we've already argued that in many ways, especially if you're a young Zoomer with not much money, the Great Reset has already happened. Yes. A lot of the policies that are being talked about in the Agenda 2030 stuff is stuff that already exists. It's stuff that is already uh, either a white paper or is effectively already in law and is just waiting to be implemented. A lot of what is, if they're talking about a policy publicly, it has effectively already reached consensus status. If they are talking about it with consensus, it has already effectively been implemented. Because if there's a leaked consensus about something, then why wouldn't they do it? Mm. <laughs> I, I, before we move on too far, I'd like to read a couple more donations. Uh, thank you, D's Bit of Rough. I do enjoy that name there. Uh, great stream as always. Why do you think the old sketch? Ethics TM, like Arch, Rags, Dev, etc., are unable to move past their 26 liberalism, uh, and there's an uwu in there as well. They are fundamentally weak people. It's also profitable. But go and read my barking at the headlines and my permissible activism pieces, or go and seek out but the videos of them on this channel that you want to hear my full explanation. That's not an excuse, because it's not that profitable. These people are These... fundamentally weak and spineless. Well, there are also people who will sell out, as, as we may see at some point, for very small amounts of money. To quote myself, uh, they exist as the house negroes of big tech, mm. yucking and jiving in hopes for another AdSense payout. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, YouTube master, I'll make the centrist content, YouTube. <laughs> and I was saying, I was saying, we love Israel is by no means us doing a bit of that. No, our love for Israel is deep and uh, sincere. It's, it's deep and real. It's very deep and very real. It's deep and real as the tunnels. Now, um, it's as deep and as blue as the as that flag with. Uh, uh, hey Scrump, any chance you could give a quick analysis on uh, the goings on in Ireland? I'm happy with the referendum results last week, and we've seen they seem to be walking up, a, uh, making up a bit of fear. I'm looking at the situation with rose tinted lens. Oh, you sorry, I fear I'm looking at the situation with rose tinted lenses. Uh, actually, you know what? Um, as actually, this is quite relevant. What's happening in Ireland is very similar to what's been happening in Australia with the voice referendum and with a lot of these efforts of democracy. It reminds me of what happened really with the the treaty, the, the vote again, mm. the Lisbon Treaty in Ireland, in that, yes, these democratic uh, kind of referendums, like Brexit, really, can fail, but it is not a defeat for them, a return to neutral. They yes. don't lose anything, and they can repropose these referendums and reword them again and again and again and again until one of them finally passes and then it's settled. It's yes. settled, it's the way it's always been, it's neutral. That's you know, it'll it might even get written to the constitution at some point. So whilst you may feel heartened by that, and I hope I, I hate to be the uh, the bearer of black pills. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think I can offer at least a slight uh, silver lining there, which there is, go. if you happen to live in Ireland, you probably live in one of very few places in the world where you could essentially create an outpost amongst a village and probably last most of this crap out. I will say yes, Ireland, yeah, uh, vote again, bigots, but the problem is, what's happening in Ireland, what's happening in Australia, unfortunately is very susceptible to a case of boot again, so... Uh, but you mentioned the World Economic Forum. If you look at the a social contract to transform our world by 2030, the thing is, to the elites, this is not conspiratorial because they are giving us their time horizons that aren't even their full time horizons. What this is to a managerialist is sensible planning. This is transparency. Well, it, it, well one, it is transparency. And two, from their point of view, this is sensible planning. Why wouldn't they plan? They are the masters. They are in power. Why wouldn't they plan ahead and have the courtesy to let you know? That's why they're so offended by a lot of people going, oh, my God, this is awful. Where they're going, well... This is, this is where your liberalism goes. This is how you keep getting your gibs. Why are you upset? We're doing what you wanted. You voted for us. We're, we're people you voted for, uh, you know, via roundabout mechanisms, but still, we're made up of people who were maybe voted on at one point. And this is, again, this is from 2016 when this first came out. It is a 15-year planning horizon, and yet we, as the dissidents, as the political force who are supposed to be insurgent, cannot are think... talking about this week's news. Yeah, they cannot think beyond this week's news, and we cannot think beyond the next election cycle, and that is why we are outclassed. It is pure time preference. It is them having better planning horizons, and quite frankly, in a managerial world, the 
person who has best management and planning wins. Yeah. yeah. Again, this is them in 2019 talking about, you know, the circular economy, how to change the world by 2030. Many people saw this as, again, conspiratorial. But this is just how you do planned economics. Although, this, this is just how you do planned politics. This is just the process of, like, limp-wristed liberal democratic socialism. This, this is, yeah. I was say, this is why we need to do the exact opposite of what they do to some extent. Yes. They write these 20, 30 year long plans predicated upon the continuation and further development of the massive technological complex that allows the modern West to exist as it does. Millions, hundreds of millions, if not maybe billions of people, all moving so that these sort of rhythmic, mechanical processes can all reach their end points and we can all buy goods and earn a wage. We should be planning for a reality where that is no longer the case, because it's not going to last forever. And if anyone is going to garner power on this planet in any substantially different structure than a modern, liberal, technical democracy, then they're going to have to plan for when the thing falls apart. Yes. And if we were really serious about what we are doing, 30 or 40 of us, maybe even less, maybe 10 or 15, would sit in a room two nights a week, three, four hours, and actually game plan what the entire world will look like when all large elements of this collapse. I mean, is that not what they do when they do their, you know, pre-COVID test situations for how they're going to control the data of the medical sort of crisis that may or may not happen, event 201 and all this stuff. You know, why are we not doing our own event 201 as well? Uh, someone just says, you can't seriously believe they think they will last forever. Well, no, they don't, but that's because they're trying to manage the decline. That's all that they've been given the option to do, though. Their legitimacy is predicated upon the fact that this will last forever. Yes. They don't think it will, but they aren't going to say that because the moment they do, the confidence in the thing Rules. Yes, it's a confidence trick. Global governance is like the British Empire. It yes. is a confidence trick. But look at this. I, I highlighted this because let me share my vision of 2030. Who, who on the right has a cohesive um, vision for 2030 that is pushed in a universal manner in the way that the WF says? Nobody. And that's how their vision wins. Because they have one, it's terrible, but they are consistent about it, they stick to it, and they see it through. Well, I think the worst thing about all of this is the closest you get to a quote-unquote right-wing version of this is the Alliance of Responsible Citizens Conference, or whatever the fuck oh it was Oh my called. god, well yeah, here's, here's the United Nations talking about transforming our world, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. But yes, the the big one, uh, I think I have it here. The the ARC conference stuff. I think you forgot to open that link. I think but I people may... know what I'm talking about yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will I will quickly get that open because the, it's just it says the platitudes, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. See, as... What the fuck does that mean? In the end, everyone is equal. That's very true, because we are all equal in hell. <laughs> no, I do not think the Jordan Peterson pound shop fake WEF is superior to the actual WEF. You are just seeing them doing a pale imitation. It is a intellectual dark web tribute act to Klaus Schwab. And it is as, as you can see here, with the looping stock footage and the empty sloganeering, it is just as hollow, just as meaningless, and just as lacking in real vision because none of this has you know they have planning i don't think they have vision it is dispassionate no. planning <clears throat> it is not something that consumes many of them they are people who have almost become bored with the process of governance and again we call this the way out is through because we have to move through all of this all this stuff is going on around us all of this containment is going on around us. all of this stuff has been pre-planned as well many, many, many years before it's actually happened yes. too. And again, we have to make peace with the fact that you might have to sacrifice, or at least people in this space might have to sacrifice maybe a small amount of 
the the red meat, <laughs> as it were, kind of ad revenue stuff, not go for the low hanging fruit because you just end up stuck in this cycle. But the problem is, like I said, it's not profitable. What is successful in terms of a distant movement is deliberately disincentivized by the power structure and by platforms like YouTube. So you end up stuck in this cycle where really you have to be people like us who do it in an amateur capacity to be able to talk about any of these issues because you simply wouldn't be economically viable. We wouldn't be economically viable as a full-time channel. No. And we just wouldn't. But no, the, these elites are immensely organized. The ship is hard to turn off course. Things have been settled policy-wise for at least a decade, if not the last 15 years. To see an individual like Larry Fink, who exists on a time horizon far outside of those of mere electoral cycles, and as such is now a pragmatist towards Donald Trump, because he recognises, possibly to some extent, that not only does it not matter to him, but actually, there's maybe a positive to it, and that Trump exudes so much sort of goodwill towards white Americans that they might turn around for four years and actually put up and shut up, which is probably the most likely thing to happen. Fink is a powerful financial technocrat, and he's so insulated within the permanent bureaucracy that ideology doesn't even matter. He just cares about the pure function of it. No, what happened is Larry Fink, and there's this uh, Telegraph article I was talking about, came out, and along with J uh, JP Morgan's Jamie Dimon, we've had that footage on the stream before, we're not going to repeat it, but what happened is that JP Morgan and BlackRock basically both came out and said, we don't care if Donald Trump is the next president, in fact, it might get rid of some of this Biden malaise. Mm. They just came out and said, look guys, don't panic, the economy's not going to implode, Donald Trump effectively is part of the plan, we could account for him, he's not the devil. Um, it was quite extraordinary to see them calm the ship like that, as you know, see them try to calm the waves like that. Sorry, mm. but the the point is that Larry Fink is somebody who exists outside of the political sphere and above the political sphere in many important ways. He is a very, very powerful financial functionary. He is part of a, the very large financial machine, and as such, he is insulated from mere election cycles. Mm. He is insulated from the mere kind of rudiments of party politics. Low politics. Yes, he is higher than low politics. And therefore, he can come out and say, look, guys, there's a good chance that Donald Trump could be the next president and he can't destroy me because I will weather that storm and we will all be fine. The financial sector will be fine. In fact, it will probably do quite well because it will overheat <clears throat> the economy a bit with a few tax cuts. Yes. <laughs> and then we can even look further into it we can suggest the likes that are referred to now as the, the PayPal Mafia. Yes. Beal, Musk, Mark Andresen, some, some of these people who have we, we have covered and yes. thoroughly found out we want nothing to do with whatsoever. No. These people are even more confident on it. They have, since maybe as early as 2015, if not earlier before in some regards with Thiel, have pitched their load in with what they want to call populism or what yes. they want to call conservatism. And what they really mean is maintaining the status quo insofar as the fact that the wider machine just operates. I think so many people, and this is even a problem we have dealt with for some of the people in our own sphere, think that they are realists or pragmatists or engaging in a realistic form of politics because... <clears throat> Their worldview is predicated upon that giant complex of people all engaging in different technical processes so that we can all have cheap takeaway pizzas and cars and houses that cost too much money. And as soon as you strip that away, you are truly in amongst radical thinking, despite the fact that you're thinking like every other person did up until about 1945. Um, also, I'd sorry, Kofi has just told me now, but uh, as... Uh, I as the stream started, I believe, someone sent us an anonymous donation of £100. So, oh, uh, thank you very much. Th th thank you very much to that person. Uh, thank you for the £100, anonymous Ko-Fi supporter. Uh, you will buy us many pints of Theakston's with that. Yes, Ooh, that might be a couple of cigars as <laughs> well. Oh, thank you guys very much. You've actually been quite generous this stream. But yes, I, what we're talking about and why Larry Fink is such a per perfect encapsulation of this 
is that those on the cutting edge of the regime are clearly tipping their hand, as you said, that they can discuss a lot of this planning stuff publicly, mm. even some of the funding stuff publicly. Yeah. And we've got the GOP reaching down into our sphere. We've got the Democratic Party reaching directly into kind of the, the radical centrist sphere. We've got the Tories reaching into our sphere. We've got all the wannabe think tanks and all the wannabe talking heads hoovering, call, hoovering up all this money. We've got, again, the revolutionary communist people reaching into our sphere. Everybody wants a piece of the election bonanza. Yes. Everyone wants the next new idea to say squeezed until its use is gone and then thrown into the bin until they go and get another influencer whose reputation they can ruin as well. Yes, uh, influence is a ten a penny. Yeah. The problem is if you... And that's why we don't do... <laughs> you don't... Oh, sorry. <laughs> they don't need you. Yeah. You need them. Yes, and that's the truth. And a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of smaller streamers will sell out for a very small amount of money, but they will sell out for legitimacy. They will sell out to feel like they are part of the machine i have no idea who that is in chat but i noticed you've just complained all stream if you want to have a go at the folk from shieldings and call it a larp go and supersede them it is the same thing we'll say ourselves in regards to our own work with this channel and nomos if you think we're not doing a good enough job go and do a better one we'll applaud you for it uh yeah and i i, I applaud to be fair we've had our differences occasionally we have a difference for everybody we're a bit spiky but <laughs> we're, we're, the shieldings people have been good to us uh you know we, we they tried to hold us a ticket last time when we we're having all our financial problems we have nothing but good things to say because you know what they're decent people and they've been decent to us i mean there's someone else in chat as well and i think they're maybe having a bit of a joke but if trump wakes up tomorrow posting bowden videos and quoting schmidt might the regime panic i would panic Yes. <laughs> I, would, I would delete everything off Twitter. This channel would be gone and you'd never hear from us again. That's a very bad sign. Yes. Oh, dear. Um, you know what? <laughs> yes, I was thinking that too. <laughs> you get a timeout, Mr. Glow. <laughs> Stop glowing. But at the end of the day, with all this, what can we do? I think, and it's not something we've got in the notes here, I think you should take it upon yourself to recognise that you aren't a hero. We're yeah. not heroes. We're not going to fix this thing and save everybody. It's just not going to happen. It's not a fairy tale story. It's always the tragic vision. Things are always going to get worse. I think the best you can do is plan for the worst. Well, and I don't mean plan for Starm or get in and he's going to do lots of horrible lefty culture stuff. I mean, plan for whoever is going to be in in the next 20 years, knowing that your community around you will be eroded and take any steps you can to preserve it. Again, we always talk about practical solutions. Practical solutions, practical solutions, practical solutions. And practical organisation is difficult right now because of all the election fever going on and all the red meat being thrown at people. But a lot of people are quite distracted by it. If you can use the period now of the election and the immediate kind of, I hate to say it, but like post not depression of the election as everyone's money runs out, it's the only way I can describe it. There's going to be this political red meat crescendo and then everyone's going to feel really sad afterwards, like mm. what happened with the 2016 election. And People will feel bereft and when the this election uh, scene is over. And oh, I, I will just... I quickly say we've got to say to people uh if you do like the video do interact with it oh yes uh, <laughs> oh we've got the thing for we, al gore's rhythms we do have the thing for al gore's rhythms and i will get him on screen in a sec but do do continue with your conclusions yes. there. Uh, i was going to say quickly chancellor chieftain has asked in chat there will there be a nomos event this year i don't think we'll be doing a full scale thing because we're just going to have to we'll work our way up to it we've got a lot of stuff still going on that we need to fix yes but there should at least unless all things go sideways again be some kind of meet-up thing towards the end of the year. Maybe, hopefully, same sort of time we normally have end of October and fingers crossed the weather's all right. Yes. <laughs> but we should also hopefully be at whatever is done for Shieldings this year. There it is. We missed it and we would like to see friends. If, if you guys don't check the community feed, there's all kinds of memes and stuff. We do. I do post on there basically every day. So if you guys miss us, uh, check the community feed because that's where Al Gore's rhythm currently is. Yes. Um, but do do go do go uh, pray, pray at the altar of Al Gore's. I am rhythm. so engaged in Al Gore's rhythms. Rhythm. <laughs> but we, yeah. yes, there will be post November this year 
a 2016 style moment where people realise what we have known for up to this point, maybe about a good six months now. Yes. That the distant right is over. It has no novelty. It can provide no use. We, as people involved in it, who wish to organise the best elements of it towards something useful, have to essentially operate in the view that it's already dead. We, not to say that you, the audience, are all going to disappear, we have to consider how do we make what we do survive and become useful to the next generation of people, maybe without this. Yes. Um, yeah, Big Ben, not to be a, a practical question, how should a father approach raising a daughter these days? Uh, as well as you can. I'm afraid that's yes. all I can say, but it's uh, only you know how to do that. Like, I, I can't sit here and give parental advice because I don't have children. I, I, I do help look after some occasionally, but there, there is really not much you can do apart from, you know, being a strong head of a household. It's really basic stuff. You know, be a good provider, be a listener. Be a man. It's what you can really yes, do sorry. in the real life. Anyway. Coney has the best idea, yeah. actually. Go and ask Radley. I was, I was about to say that. <laughs> and... Us. Yes. Because really, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Radley are the people to ask about that. No, um, I, I'd like to think we are well-meaning and nice people, but we're not the sort of people to be having children uh probably not <laughs> it's more for um practical reasons than anything but but what could you mean by that <laughs> what, what, what could you, what could I, speaking of uh, yeah so the immediate post-election political landscape will be actually quite it will be a disaster for people who buy into the cycle it'll be a disaster for people who eat at the news trough but it will actually be a boon for people like us people will for a moment at least feel quite confused as to where they should go and what they should do as the propaganda volume is turned down slightly. Yes, I think uh, specifically on that question as well, go look at the article on the Substack I did about a month and a bit ago, maybe two months ago now, Surviving in the Wilderness. Yes. Where we discussed the fact that us existing in the political wilderness as we do and the peace and quiet that we have had here will be invaded by people basically parachuting out of mainstream right movement. Not because they're parachuting out of them <laughs> to run away forever, but in so much as the fact that they're parachuting out of them briefly to look for new things to co-op. I, I saw you, there will always be milk. Actually, yes, good realisation there, that's funny. But yeah, you were like, oh, no one could really tell you that. Maybe apart from you, you're like, oh, okay, maybe Radlib, he's yes. the only person. I see uh, Mr Twisted Frenzy there has given us a super chat. Any chance you lads could do a stream with Harry or Callum from the Lotus Eaters? We've already done one with Harry. I don't know, maybe we could do another one with him maybe again in the future. I, I, I will say we had a good stream with Harry when we talked about the Carlisle Institute, which is really part of our ambition here. We yes. would love to have our own little, not in the same way that other people do, our own little ideas engine, our own little official place where people can meet, where people can be, uh, even if it is just a small kind of in, like charity or NGO at the start of it. I know everyone wants to start those, but it's the good thing to do. Um, and we did do the stream. If you go look for the Carlisle Institute stream on our channel, we did that with Harry. Harry was great. A big fan of Harry. We talked to him relatively often. Um, and he's a, he's, a good, he's a good lad. And I may or may not be seeing him if I can find time with work in May at some point. Um, but we'll we'll see if that happens or not because I have to fit it in around my yeah. employment. <laughs> I mean, someone's sitting there. I imagine some MLK Republic Uck Boomer parachuting in these spaces. That's Christopher Ruffo. Yes, he's they're all, This has already happened. That's, this is this is that's why half we, of the output of somewhere like the Blaze. This is why we say act like you are in the future because these things are already happening. <laughs> uh, thank you, big time for the five uh, five dollars. I appreciate the stream and thank you. Well, we're not coming towards the complete end here, but we, we do like to make these a good, kind of, a nice, concise hour. We like to go out on top, really. And I think we've covered most of the material. Um, is there anything that you uh, would like to say before we go, Evelyn? Or anything I've forgotten to shill? I don't know, but just that guy shilling PA in the chat's a wally. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. But anyway, uh, I don't think we have anything else to really add. I think we've we've come round I, in a nice a I nice round yeah. sort of end point. 
Uh, what I will say is, do not join a, a uh, explicitly political organization in these times. No. We will never found a explicitly political <clears throat> organization, and neither should you. Because yes. Because that comes with very, very, very bad legal consequences in the current time period. But I will quickly just uh, do a, an extra little, a little chilling here to give people an idea of where they can find more of our work. There will be more on the Substack over the next week. I'll be putting out something, I believe, uh, maybe as soon as tomorrow, because I'll be putting out the two, sorry, as soon as Thursday, because I'll be putting out this, uh, and I'll be putting out last week's, or, you know, the stream from two weeks ago, which I had a bunch of issues with trying to get uploaded. Uh, I will put, be putting those up as audio podcasts. There's also our entire backlog of written content here. Um, What's happening is that we have a lot of stuff on the go. We do it as we can. But thank you to everyone who supports us through the Substack. It's one of the main ways you can support us. So do check us out there. And again, thank you to everyone who's donated. Um, and the best way to do so is via the Ko-Fi. We just like to do our quick kind of shillings here. I I, I don't think there's too much more we can talk about. Uh, any any parting advice, Evelyn? Uh, stop looking at your phone. Go to the pub. And enjoy if there's some nice weather your way this weekend. A nice cigar out in the pub garden and yes. frolic with the local wildlife. I don't know. Frolic with the <laughs> local. Uh, thank you, Evelyn. Very cool. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you later. Good night. <laughs>